Sometimes in chess, you find yourself in a situation where every move ruins your position. During such moments, you wish that you could just skip or pass your turn, but in chess, you always have to make a move. When one side has to move, and all of the moves lead to a losing position, we call that position Zugzwang. In this position, whichever side has to move is in Zugzwang. With white to move, there are no moves for the king that can protect the g4 pawn, as f4 is covered by black's pawn. White is forced to give away the pawn after king e4, and king takes g4. When black should win the game, as long as black remembers the basics of king and pawn endgames. Looking at the starting position again, with black to move, black would be in Zugzwang for the same reason. Black cannot protect the pawn, and after the king moves, white simply captures the g5 pawn. Let's take a look at another example of Zugzwang. In this position, black's king is happy to sit in the corner and prevent white from making any progress. If black tries to force a pass pawn on the queen side with b5, notice that after white captures this pawn, white is only three squares away from promoting with check. Black's pawn, on the other hand, is four moves away from promoting. Black's plan is to just shuffle the king back and forth. Can you see a way white can put black into Zugzwang? If you found h7, great job. Black's king cannot move, but it is not stalemate because black does have a legal move, even if it is a very bad one. Black is forced to play b5, and after a takes b5, black loses the pawn race, and with it the game, after a4, b6, a3, b7, a2, b8 equals queen. Checkmate. Let's take a look at another example. Trying to win a rook versus bishop endgame can be very difficult if the defender's king is near the center of the board. In this position, white's king is stuck on the back rank, and after rook h1 check, white's only move to avoid checkmate is bishop c1. Using the idea of Zugzwang, can you find a checkmate in 2 for black? If you found any rook move on the first rank, great job. After rook g1, white's king is forced to move away from the bishop with king a1. When black delivers checkmate with rook takes c1. Let's finish this lesson by looking at perhaps the most famous Zugzwang position of all time. In this position, Known as the Immortal Zugzwang game, Grandmaster Aaron Nimzovich has the black pieces against Grandmaster Friedrich Samish. Black has a large space advantage, and all of black's pieces are far more active than white's army. Notice that white's queen is nearly trapped after rook 5 to f3. But after bishop takes f3, and rook takes f3, white's queen can escape with queen g5. Nimzovich wanted to avoid this, so he came up with a much stronger idea. Nimzovich played the very quiet, but incredibly powerful move, h6. After this quiet move, incredibly white is in Zugzwang. Black is now threatening rook 5 to f3, trapping white's queen. If white tries to make room for the queen to retreat, white's position will also collapse. For example, if white moves the dark squared bishop to the only safe square, c1, white's knight on b1 will be captured by the bishop. Notice that the knight on b1 and the bishop on g2 do not have any safe moves without being captured. If white moves the e1 rook, say to c1, the e2 square is no longer protected by that rook, so black can win white's queen with rook e2. If white moves the other rook to its only available square, f1, black will simply capture the rook with the bishop. Since any other move will lose white's queen after rook 5 to f3, Grandmaster Samish resigned the game. Are you ready to run your opponent out of moves using Zugzwang? Let's see.